what is going on with you? You seem, I don't know, what the, I can't find the word. I think I'm angry. Angry? Yeah, I'm an angry person, which people don't get from TV. I seem very friendly, but that's just a mask that I put on. Well, many people have taken their anger and turned that anger into good things. I can't think of an example. Uh, Mother Teresa, huh. she just used her anger and, and sort of came up with this whole I should be a saint thing. Well, It is constructive, I think. I use the anger for good things. I'm just trying to find the source of the anger. The anger that you're describing, Conan, it seems to me that your relationships with women in particular are often the victim of that anger. Yeah, and uh, I think a lot of it has to do with my situation growing up. Well, please, let's not open that can of worms. What? I'm sorry, that was just a joke. See, I believe in injecting a little levity into therapy. Uh, sure, yeah, I guess. I call it therapy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. It's not, it's not a big joke, it's just a little thing. No, that's, you know, that's not bad. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was a comedy house. Is that what you call it? I, you know, if I could stop, I would. I apologize. Well, you're a machine. It's like asking the Terminator not to kill. Thank you for noticing. You know, I would like to feel that at least one of us is taking me seriously, and my preference there would be you. I do take you seriously. Seriously. Well, that that's good. I'm counting. You're eight for eight so far. Thank you. Do you feel like you're in the zone right now? Like every... Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Is there a drink minimum in here? Ladies and gentlemen, we got a terrific show for you uh, today. We got a lot of fun stuff planned. To be frank, though, I'm feeling a little strange. I'm in kind of a weird mood. I saw my therapist today, and I, I started talking to him about my childhood, and he said, Please, let's not open that can of worms. <laughs> Huh. Oh, that's pretty good. Therapist, that's excellent. Oh, I like that. How come you don't tell jokes like that? That's uh, I'm I'm working on it. Oh my goodness. Well, you actually thought it was funny. What part did you like? What part? The funny part. Yeah, I can't really dissect. So you obviously didn't think it was funny. I do think it's funny, but it's also quite brilliant. Do you think? Huh. Yeah. You know, like all good jokes, it sort of cuts to the issue. Uh huh. Right. Hey, Julie, is he sounding like weird to you? Uh, just a. Well, yeah. Is this better? <laughs> So I'm talking to uh, Stanley and Julie, and the TV's on in the background. Sure enough, there is Conan O'Brien doing a joke that I made in session with him. Really? Verbatim. So he did a joke you told to him in the session? Yeah. How come you were telling jokes to people? And... That's a whole other issue. Are you sure you're not mistaken that maybe he just did the setup and... No, Ben... I, I think you should be happy. Well, if I was a professional joke writer and I had submitted the joke to him, I'd be happy. Oh, you want to get paid. It's not the money. It's the recognition because besides you, I can't tell anybody. And I want to tell everybody. Man, you know, I'll tell you, society has gotten to a point where you can't just tell a joke and just be friendly about it. Everything has to be bought and sold. You cannot copyright a joke, but once he does it on national television, I can't do it in therapy with anyone else. Do you repeat material you use to other patients? Well, uh, certain phrases come up like, let's explore that. Right. You know, but that's not so funny. Not funny at all. No. Hey, Dad, what if you were um, Columbus's therapist? Oh, let's explore that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's funny. You could take that joke. I don't care. It's yours. Let's just enjoy. Freud said the joke is a death of an emotion. Could have been his delivery. <laughs> He's telling my joke on national TV, and it works. Really? You must have been so happy. No, actually, I wasn't. I was, I was a little hurt that he would use something that, that I said to him in confidence as fodder for his comedy. Yeah, but he pays you for the session. Doesn't he essentially buy the rights to all the material? Hmm, that's an interesting point. I mean, you should be happy that one of your jokes actually made it onto the show. Yeah, but I didn't get proper credit for it, Laura. Well, what is he going to do, stop and say, by the way, that joke was written by my therapist? Would it kill him? <sighs> they could have had a Chiron, you know, under him on the screen. Joke written by Dr. Casper. Hi, this is Conan. I'm not in right now. Leave a message and I'll get back to you. Conan, I'm sorry I missed you. I was hoping you and I could talk a little bit about what happened last night. Not a big deal, but I will leave you a message. I'll try to get to the point. I will say as a disclaimer, I've been known for taking a while to get to the point. I think, in fact, that's one of my nicknames, 
taking a while to get to the point. Cats. That's what they call me over the long winded center. Anyway, I was flattered if the joke worked, but I just would like to feel that what you say to me in the privacy of my office is not just fodder for your, uh, or fuel for your fodder. Is that an expression? How is your fodder? Oh my God, you're still talking to me? Um, listen, so call me back when you... Leave a message and I'll get back to you. Conan, I'm sorry I, this has gone on so long. And if you want to call me back, you can try me at the office, leave a message. If I get the message, I'll call you back from my cell phone. Hey, am I the only American with a rotary cell phone? Hey, if I could stop, I would. Hi, I'm Whoopi Goldberg. I have a two o'clock. Mm-hmm. Could you take a seat, please? I'm a little kind of agitated. Do you mind if I stand up? I just, um, I'm trying to go to... Kind of. Oh, okay, sorry. Thanks. I feel like I'm making some progress, you know. Great. I'm supposed to go to Europe on an airplane. Uh... It's the idea of being over the ocean where they could drop you. I don't want to die in the sky. Well, you wouldn't die in the sky. You'd die when you hit the ground. I would die all the time. From the time that I knew I was down, I would be dying. That's the problem. I mean, what about, like, going in an elevator? Doesn't that scare you? No. If that doesn't scare you, then going in an airplane shouldn't scare you. It's 35,000 feet, Laura. Well, yeah, but this is 12 stories up. It's not the same thing! <laughs> you just f***ing with me, Laura! Why are you f***ing with me in the office, the outer office of the shrink? Is he cutting you in on some money? No, I think this is good to get this stuff out of the way because it's taken you a month just to say out loud that you hate flying. It started out with your passion for the bus, <sighs> your love of ground transportation. Well, yeah. Those are just words masking the real issue. The real issue is I don't want to drop out the sky. Right. I feel like I could be Jackie Chan on the bus, okay? Because I know where the emergency windows are. If the bus starts to fall over, I can kick out the windows and throw myself over the top of the bus and roll. Yeah. But when the airplane is, like, having trouble, you can't kick Jack except the person next to you, and then they sue you. That's right. You should come on the bus with me. You would understand you'd never fly again. It's amazing. It's the peacefulness of it. I know what it's like to spend many, many hours on a bus. Didn't you feel soothed? Is that like nausea? Well, yeah, I, I did hear from him. I, I'm in my car this morning, and the phone rings, and the doctor says your test came back, and then the phone goes dead. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, am I the only guy in America with a rotary cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> ben, did you hear what he just said? What's that? Hold on, Ben. Does anyone else have one? Because we could call each other. <laughs> oh, man. He just said, am I the only guy in America with a rotary cell phone? I left that on his answering machine. Right, right, Dad. I, uh, yeah, today. Sure he did. Yeah, about four hours ago I did. Yeah, so did I. I'm just saying, Ben, this is getting a little bit... Uh... Dad, I'm trying to watch the show here. Well, now I miss the rest of the monologue. Why don't you look at me and just go right to the source? You think he did another one of your jokes? I know he did. Dad, this is becoming like an obsession, and it's bad. Really? Hey, Dad, why were you leaving a joke on this guy's answering machine? Y you know, because I like to kid around, Ben. Well, Dad, you were the one who complained that he stole one of your jokes to begin with. Yeah, And but... you go back and call him and tell him more jokes? Yes. Did you write that rotary phone joke yourself, or did you come up with it? Of course that's my joke. I made that up. I'm just saying that's not a funny. If you're going to write jokes, there has to be a twist. That's the whole point of a joke. Right. Take, for instance, this joke. Mm -hmm. Hey, does um, the grocery store have to put out rotten vegetables? Is that a requirement? That's funny. I, I don't want fresh. That's not why I came to the store. So I'm pointing my finger at the manager. Where are the rotten vegetables? You know what I'm saying? And then you can continue and sort of riff. Give me another example, Ben, because I'm, I'm not sure I, that one works for me. Okay. Hey, uh, when I go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and I want a carton of eggs, mm -hmm. the half of them have to be broken and rotten? So it's like the one with the fruit. Yes, but a different food group. So in other words, you mine the real world for comedy. That's right. And that's where the real comedy comes from is the real yeah. world, not this road cell phone bullshit. Well, or you could say like, okay, I went to the grocery store. Wait, express lane? I don't think so. <laughs> How is this express? Because I'm waiting. Hello. Then I bring probably the manager character back. That's called the callback. Yeah. And then I would say, here you're rotten eggs, sir. How about this? I went to the grocery store and they had an express yourself lane. Oh, that's not bad, Dad. So I talked a little bit about growing up in New York, got some groceries, and uh, went to the checkout lane. Okay, so I lost you. <laughs> the joke was funny, but then you sort of half-assed the tag. Okay. But whatever. I mean, that's your style. Here, this is better. One of those animal shows. 
Are they stealing anything from you? That's my fur. Oh, my God. <laughs> Conan, the whole notion of doctor-patient confidentiality is so that we both can feel a sense of safety in this environment. You're absolutely right. I, I had no idea that I was doing that. I appreciate the apology, but I think that there's a reason you did that. Very much like the kleptomaniac who steals. It's not about him wanting to have... I didn't steal anything. That okay. change was on the couch, and I just... It's anybody's change, isn't it? Well, find his keepers, lose his weepers is a very immature approach to anything. Well, it, it rhymes, though. And anything that rhymes has a sort of hidden truth, I think. Yeah. Believe me, I don't think there's any real underlying issue here. I think it's just something that happened once. That's all. Twice. And it won't happen again. But man, <laughs> I was listening to the answering machine. You were working it. Sweat was coming through the phone. Con, really what I was doing was I was, I just wanted to make sure that I made my point and that I did it in a way that was entertaining. Because I saved the tape. I've been playing it for people at work. And how did I do? You know what? It starts out okay. Mm -hmm. And then it, I'll be honest with you, it gets ugly. Dr. Katz's office. Laura. Hi. How are you? Fine. So what's happening? working. Boring. Uh-huh. Is my dad obsessing about this Conan O'Brien thing? Yeah, I don't understand what the big deal is. You didn't happen to see the show last night, did you? No. Because uh, my dad said he did another one of his jokes. Something about a rotary cell phone, which was not funny. I think he's going completely insane. My dad or Conan? Your dad. Yeah. Like, there's just no way. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that even if this guy is stealing jokes from my dad, which is, to begin with, a sad prospect. Yes. It's like this guy's eventually going to just get canceled because of my dad. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, in the end, it really is Conan who's crazy. Well, that's the tragic irony of the situation. Laura, you're a ball of comedy today. That wasn't funny. It wasn't? When you talk about being in an airplane, you keep saying, and then they drop me out in the middle of the ocean. Right. You're attributing qualities to the airline and to the people who run the airline that they don't necessarily possess. You're demonizing them. Yes, I am. Okay, just checking. But I want some secure people up there. Mm -hmm. They never tell you until you're in the damn turbulence that you're in the turbulence like you don't know. Well, that's not totally true. When you fly cross-country, they're going to say it looks like a smooth ride. But they lie. They lie. They lie, especially when I'm on the plane. I have not had a smooth ride since my first husband. Well, the guy's starting to question his own personality now, you know? He's just, like, always going around. Is this funny? Is that funny? I don't think he's questioning his personality. I think it's going to his head. Well, I know, but... He's like, oh, Conan used my jokes. I'm so upset. Hey, how about this one? Get Conan on the phone. Let me try it out on him. Yeah. I mean, plus, I, I just, I gotta be honest. If anybody got the humor gene in the Katz family, it's Ben. Ben who? Ben Katz, me. Oh. I mean, I mean... Well, if anybody did. Right. What do you mean? I don't know. I just feel like I'm very cynical. And what do you feel is the thing that's most responsible for your cynicism? The world is most responsible for my cynicism. It's like the movie. I wanted to get into Titanic. I should have been able to, to enjoy this movie about thousands of people dying at the end of it. Right. I didn't. I just feel like I'm missing the point of a lot of things. Like you got mail. I didn't care. I didn't care that they lived, you know, in bookstores next door and he... I didn't care. The fact that your fantasy and Hollywood's fantasy don't correspond is not necessarily a bad thing, Whoopi. Maybe. Their inability to capture your imagination, that's their problem. I know, but that leaves me feeling so kind of empty. That's your problem. Like, for instance, a guy like me, I can just pick up the paper, mm -hmm. take a look at it, and I can develop and you know, just come up with jokes. Uh, so I would say, like, uh, hey, they uh, just announced that this new fat-blocking obesity drug has been approved by the government. And uh, its only side effect, the report, is uh, oily stool. In, uh, in related news, Ted Kennedy reports to have uh, oily stool. What? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm implying that Ted Kennedy is obese. It's so funny that you think that's funny. Right, yeah, that's great. Um, hey, Laura, uh, did you hear they're uh, cloning sheep now? That's all we need, more shepherds. <laughs> I've kind of been studying them lately. 
You've been studying them? Yeah, especially the sort of the monologue part. Because I'm, you know, I'm thinking about turning my career around. Turning your career around. 180 degrees and going in opposite direction. I would think that's the kind of career where you just kind of dive in and just start writing a bunch of jokes. And you see if they're good. What's this? I have to repeat all that? I'm sorry. I tuned out. I said that sounds like a career where you just have to dive in. And yeah, whatever, it. Todd. Listen, here's the point. The world of television is just totally open to me, and I'm going to jump right in. Well, you're always really funny here at the store. See, this is the problem with being a joke writer, is that everyone's like, be funny now, mm -hmm. like on the spot. Like, uh, you hold up your pen and like, oh, right. tell me a joke about this pen. And I'm like, well, I, I don't do that. I want to hear these jokes, man. Well, I mean, I didn't bring any. I could just, I mean, I... Pretend I'm a, like a woman and you're trying to pick me up and you want to... Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't use my jokes as a pickup. I write about my own experiences and what I see in the world. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, actually, I had lunch today. I was eating one of those club sandwiches. Right. How come uh, nobody's thought of making the edible toothpick? Because I prefer not to have the roof of my mouth stabbed every time I chew. It's like, hello, doctor. Are you with me, Todd? That's a weak joke, actually. What do you mean, weak? Not weak. Do you do any topical jokes? Well, Todd, maybe you're just not a laugher. Did you ever think of that? Yeah, I think you're going to be meeting lots of non-laughers. Hey, Dad. Hey, Ben. Listen, I was just talking to Laura, and I'm trying to get Conan's phone number, and she won't give it to me. Well, she's not supposed to do that. Well, here's the deal. Authorize Laura to give me Conan's phone number because I want to call him. That would be totally inappropriate. Well, I got a whole bunch of jokes I want to pitch to him, and the only way I can do that is if I call him. Ben, Ben, Conan is a patient of mine. Yeah. What time is a Conan's appointment, next appointment? This is a terrible way to keep time. Maybe what I should do is give you some of my jokes. You pass them on to Conan, then Conan will do them on his show, and I'll, you'll kind of be like my middleman. Why would I acquiesce to the suggestion? Let's see what else is in the news. Well, I guess now they're, um, they're cloning sheep. That's all we need in the world, more shepherds. <laughs> that is funny. Dad, you have developed the wheeziest <laughs> laugh. Is that what happens to old people? It's wheezy for you to say. I like that shepherd joke. Just trying to think of how I could work that into a session with him. How about this one? Does a soap dish ever get dirty? I've got that joke on my list. You gotta be kidding. It's right here. We'll cross off the duplicates. Okay. Another joke. Right? I bought a VCR, and I can't program it. It's always flashing 12, 12, 12, so I just tape the news at noon. <laughs> Give me a break. I'm new at this, Ben. Hey, um, when does it stop with the angle toothbrushes? Yeah. It's like, what do I want, a 90-degree toothbrush now? Mm. What's wrong with the straight one that fit in my mouth in the first place? It goes back to one issue. I want the information. You're entitled to the information. There are no accidents. People shave their legs and then put Love Jehovah oil on them and then go screaming, oh, my legs are on fire. Who does this? Women who want to have these great deep sexual encounters think, oh, I'm going to scent myself. And they don't tell you on the bottle where not to put this stuff. Yeah. And suddenly, just as the car is pulling up, there's a heat that begins at the top of the vaginal area. Um. And then, as the car door is closing, your eyes begin to tear because you realize you've made a horrible mistake. You then rush into the bathroom and try to shower it out between the time he gets to the door and you realize all you've done is spread it. I'm sorry, so your point is? I want the information from the people who have it. Right, you're, you're entitled to that. I want the information on the plane. Right. I want the information from the people who make the oil not to put it in the pookie area, because it's not meant for pookie. Mm -hmm. Why can't I just get the information I want? Why do I have to, like, turn into negress on fire woman? If I had a nickel for every time somebody asked me that question. How are things going with your girlfriend? To be honest, I think we've reached an impasse in the relationship. She's seeing other guys. I'm sorry, I did it again, I'm sorry. You know, look, I really don't want to do this. I don't find this approach helpful for me. You know, the approach where you make jokes. I apologize. I will try and assume a more professional stance for the rest of the session. I feel like I don't trust you now. Everything you say, I think, is the setup for another joke. That is... I do. I, I think you've got a real corker. I think you've got a real doozy, and you're waiting to unload it on me. It's not true, Conan. I feel like that we have boundaries in this office, that I have crossed over some line. I am now crossing back over it. 
Guy calls his wife from the office. True story. All right, listen. You know, there you go. It's ridiculous. Conan. Huh? Conan. Oh. You remember me, right? Um. I'm uh, Ben Katz. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. hey, how, how's it going? You just how are got you? out of my father's office, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, and no, I was in there for a, a session, yeah. This is a, a coincidence. Oh, oh, yeah, well, it's, it's nice to see you. It's funny, I was just, uh, <laughs> I just came here from the uh, convenience store. Really? I don't know why they call them convenience stores. I mean, they should call them inconvenience stores. <laughs> I actually, I should, and I have to, I have to kind of run. I should go. I have you right, know, right, right, show right, today right. to do. Right. So I just went to the bathroom, and then you know how you get that pee spot, right? <laughs> and yeah. it's like, uh, it's like a bullseye. Everybody's eyes are drawn. They know you peed in your own pants. And then when they say something, you try and pass it off, like, oh, uh, that's just water. Right. Right. Is there anything in there that you think is what do you call it viable for what? I don't know for like um, America. Look, actually, uh, you know, you, you seem like a nice kid, and there are ways that people go about this. You just can't take shortcuts. It, like stealing from my dad. Pardon me? Like taking his jokes. He told you about that? Oh, yeah, he tells me everything. I, I'm... He told me about the bedwetting, <laughs> told me about the red hair problem. You know, I didn't steal from your dad. It was a subconscious theft, and I've made my peace with it, and I've moved on. Right, right. Hey, Conan, what's with those angled toothbrushes? I mean, when are they going to stop? I, I'm, I'm, Am I going to be brushing with something shaped like a U? Does this thing work? I mean, how how much angle do you need? I mean, what the, what's, huh? I'm sorry, I, I got to... Conan! Wait up, buddy!